Upe! 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 Hey, if you've been in Costa Rica at any time, you're going to hear the word Upe at your gate or your door. And if you hear someone saying Upe in the middle of the night, you better know what that means because it could be uh, dangerous. We'll talk about that a little bit later. First, well, I'm. This is my beautiful host, Rebecca, and we are live living in Costa Rica. And we're going to be answering all of your questions about living in Costa Rica. Are you considering moving to Costa Rica? And, uh, but first, we're going to be talking about what we just got through watching, which, which, which was our premiere of the Tinamaste, but somehow I goofed. I had this live going live at the same time as that one when this one should have been at 12.45. Hey, you got to experience Tico time, so there you go. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. So anyway, we just had the... Uh, the hey, hey, before we get too far in, make sure that we have um, audio. Yeah, hey, go ahead and put some chats in there. Our, our history uh, of the audio is not... <laughs> Yeah, Wonderful. unfortunately, we sometimes have a lot of technical disasters and demons. I call them technical gremlins. But, hey, can you guys hear us? And uh, are we live? It looks like people says you're all good. So that's good. So fantastic. So anyway, uh, we just got through watching the premiere, the extended version, or not the extended version, the shortened version, yeah. showing you Tina Maste and everything that's there. But let me ask, you know, Tina Maste is a hot spot for expats and gringos. Mm -hmm. Rebecca, why do you think it's a hot spot? For Tina Maste? Yeah. Hmm. Well, the location, that's probably uh, one of the... Well, which, what's, well, what's no, significant about the location? Because, I mean, I like San Isidro. Yeah, and the location is not even the primary thing, I think, because... Are Costa beautiful. Maste is the high altitude combined... Number with, one, the high altitude, yeah. which means cool temperatures. Cool, right. What's the cool number two? temperatures combined with the location. Okay, so we got cool opinion. temperatures, but why is that location significant? Because you're right, like 30 minutes one way from uh, San Isidro and 30 minutes the other way from the beach. So it's like... Absolutely. Yeah. So number one, the location is perfect because like you said, hey, 30 minutes one way, you're right there at the beach. And so beach lovers love it, mm -hmm. right? But they don't want to be in the heat of the beach. However, 30 minutes the other way, then you've got ease of shopping, especially now with the Walmart. So Tina Maste is absolutely a gringo hotspot and has been a gringo hotspot for years. But there is one con. If there was one con about that whole area, what would you say that disadvantage of living in Tina Maste would be? Oh, well, to me, it has too many clouds. It, it's cloudy a lot of the day. It's in rainy season. Um, you know, it's sunny the, the morning, and then it starts getting cloudy. So, But that's a little thing. But, you know, it's so high up that you, you just experience the clouds a lot. Yeah. So, and also we say 30 minutes one way and 30 minutes the other. That's kind of an estimate. It's it's actually less than that. Yeah, it's really less than that. But you know, for me, I think the biggest con is if I was going to move to Tinamaste, well, I'm always looking for the best deal possible. But because there's a lot of expats, well, that in itself has mm -hmm. has brought the pr real estate prices higher than the norm, don't you think? Right. Well, I know they're asking a lot for uh, land and houses and stuff. Now, what they actually sell for, that I'm not sure, but if you... Good point, right? Yeah, if you because go and check the internet, um, it is, you know, supply and demand. There's yeah. a lot of demand for the area and... Everything yeah, is for sale in Costa Rica, and it's amazing how many things are for sale. And because it is, well, it's a buyer's market. So you absolutely can work a deal because everybody wants to sell their property, mm -hmm. uh, especially in Tina Maste because gringos have been there for so long. Well, these expats are ready to go home and live their last few years with their family and they want to sell their property. And so a, a lot of them are taking some deep, deep cuts, right? Some right. Uh, losses for their property. So I'm not saying take advantage of anybody, but you know, people are willing to, to, to take a loss so they can sell their property because they know there's just too many properties for sale. Right. There's yeah. a, a large increase in the supply. <laughs> there's a, a lot of people starting to sell their properties. 
And um, you know, some have waterfalls, some have ocean views, some are just uh, cattle fields, you know, uh, that the land has been uh, deforested to make room for cattle, yeah. uh, cattle grazing. And, <laughs> and I guess I, I don't care for that that property that much. I like something with some trees on it and mm -hmm. some water on it, yeah. you know, but um, there's is. lots of cattle land. I mean, people, Ticos are selling their entire farms. Um, there may not be an ocean view, but there'll be water yeah. on it. So let me pause you for a moment because I am seeing that uh, a couple of folks saying that the audio is cutting out. So let me know, uh, mm -hmm. does it sound like the audio is cutting out just when Rebecca is talking or does the audio cut out for me as well? Uh, if it seems like the audio is cutting out, maybe I just need to change the batteries in her uh, mic. So please let me know. Is the audio cutting out just for me or just for Rebecca or is it both of us? So I kind of know how to fix this problem. Okay. But yeah. Uh, absolutely. It's okay again. It, it, okay. They say it was just a short audio blip. So maybe everything is working good for now. Okay. So. And of course there was a diesel on the road right out there. Yeah. Well, it looks like it's it's back. So it says okay. it's all better now. Great. Thank you okay. so much for the input. Yeah. So. And, and you know, Tina Monte, um has been settled for many years. A long time, yeah, right? Yeah, a long time. Um, of course, by uh, Ticos, but I'm talking about by uh, foreigners. Uh, Tina Maste has been a hot spot. Um, whereas areas like Uvita and a little further down south, it's fairly new, you know, within like maybe the last five mm -hmm. to 10 years, that area has been being developed. So the, I find that the properties that are for sale in Tina Maste, when the homesteads, you know, where there's houses, it's older properties. Yeah, you know, I, I agree with you. I think a lot of the properties in Tina Maste, they, they are older properties. However, uh, you know, it, it was uh, a lot of expats or gringos that kind of helped grow Tina Maste. So those houses are probably uh, are going to be built maybe better than most of the Tico houses, okay? Because Tico houses, they, they build theirs a little bit basic, you know, but that's, that's okay. So it's just understanding, but, you know, you can get some really uh, decent deals right now. It's, it is a beautiful area. Yeah. Lots of water. Uh, it's it's gorgeous area, gorgeous the views. views yeah. You know, the views are just absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. So and the um the tour that we took that we did, of course, it follows just the main road, and we went down what maybe two or three um offshoots, right. off roads. Mm -hmm. But there are tons. I mean, tons of roads here and there and everywhere up in the the mountains and down into the valley, and there are some. Gorgeous. You know, there are some homes. beautiful places, especially that one road tour that we took that goes toward Tumbus. You know, there's a lot of cattle fields in there. And so it would be easy for you to buy a beautiful piece of property there and reforest it, plant some trees and stuff. And it would be absolutely gorgeous mm -hmm. right there. So it just really all depends on your liking and, and what you want to put into it. Right. And we have noticed um, some developers buying up um, like maybe of old forms and turning them into uh, communities, you know, uh, building houses. And I have to say the newer houses that are being built, um, even by, um, you know, Tico families, they're modern and they're done nicely. They're really, really pretty. And um, we say that because we've rented, you know, we've stayed in a lot of older homes. Older you know? Tico style homes, yeah, right? And, and we call, you know, we say uh, typical homes, but that's not, um, that's like the older style home because the newer homes are really modern looking. So anyway, we're, we're basing fact, it on some of right. the older you know, homes that we stay in. We that, often talk about the Tico style homes. And uh, so I think here very soon, I'm going to show you the difference between some of the Tico style homes that we typically stay in because, you know, um, Call me tight, call me cheap. We stay in some Tico style places to save money for where we're going. But man, they are some nice places, especially around here in uh, Pettigrosso. Uh, I was out for a walk the other day and run Nikki and I and saw some unbelievable houses that I'm going to show you. So if you want to live the Beverly Hillbillies lifestyle, you can <laughs> definitely do it right here in Pettigrosso. There's some fine houses here. It all depends on yeah. well how much money you have and 
how you your style of living, right? right? Really all over Costa Rica. All over Costa yeah. Rica. But when you we're know, talking to your guy, you guys, you know, we're we're kind of talking to people that um, are coming here maybe to scout out you know, uh, areas, and you're not wanting to spend a whole bunch of money just uh, staying in an area to find out if you like it or not. That's so, right. Uh, we look at a lot of uh, lower cost, lower That's end right. rental houses. Okay, now, but I got to pause for a moment because I've been teasing people in my emails about this really cool, cool announcement, okay? And, um, <laughs> we, we, I mean, we really ought to tell them about it, don't you think? Well, yeah. Or, or should we wait? <laughs> That's your style. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. We got a really cool announcement. All right. Like, tell them now. <laughs> if you want to know the announcement, go ahead and tell me now, now, now. Give me a like. Give me some thumbs up because I can see there's 20 likes. And uh, oh, look, Marcus says, tell them now. Tell them, tell them. <laughs> So, hey, yeah, Marcus we, has been helping us. <laughs> I, so, oh, look, I got people saying now, now. So, look, I see that there's 45 people watching right now. There's only 22 likes. Give us some likes. But I got, look at, look at the comments now, now. Yes, spit it out, Alan. <laughs> okay, I got this really cool, cool announcement. And I got to tell you that really, it, it, it's, it's really, it's Marcus's fault. It, it is. It's Marcus's fault. Well, who the heck is Marcus? <laughs> well, Marcus is one of the guys that's been watching us. He loves Costa Rica. He wants to come to Costa Rica. So Marcus, you know, he contacted me and said, hey, Alan, you need a Facebook group. And, uh, you know, he says, I do this and I, and, and I want to do more and more of it, you know, and I do this for several businesses. So, hey, Marcus might be the guy that can help you as well. But Marcus has built us a Facebook group where you can join right now. Hey, you just simply go to uh, facebook.com slash groups slash living in CR. Hey, the link is in the description below. So you can go to the description below. You can click on it. But if you are viewing from a TV and there is no description, just go to facebook.com slash groups, groups is plural, slash living in CR. And if you go there, you can join the group. It says join now. Click join now. And Marcus is on the other side and he is admitting people in. You have to answer a couple of questions and you have to answer to the rules because, hey, I don't like trolls, never have. So you do have to be polite. You do have to be nice and respectful. Otherwise, we boot you right out. So <laughs> anyway, join the group. We're going to have a whole lot of fun uh, inside the group. And already lots of people are saying, hey, thanks, thanks, thanks. And look, uh, people say, is this your first Facebook account? And it's not my first Facebook account. Matter of fact, we've got lots of pages and been on Facebook. I just didn't create a group, really didn't have time. It's a lot of work building a YouTube channel. And uh, Marcus came to me and said, I'll do it for you. And so thank you so much to Marcus. Give Marcus a big shout out. You know, uh, greatly appreciate Marcus. So Marcus is one of the admins inside the group. He's there right now admitting you in. So, hey, I'm so, so excited to have everybody join the group. And I can't wait to see how many people will join the group while we're on this live. So, you know, at the end of the live, I'm gonna go see how many people have joined our Facebook group. I'm really excited because, you know, it's a place where we can, um, we can share tidbits, right? We can share little bits of things that's going on because I create videos and love to make videos, but it's a lot of work. Mm -hmm but I can take some little snapshots and I can take little bitty videos and I can share them on the Facebook group and you're gonna learn so, so much more, you know, instead of waiting to the weekend or waiting, we can share tidbits of what's happening in Costa Rica, what's happening with us, yeah. just so that you can learn. And, and they can interact together. Yeah, you can interact and help one another. Mm -hmm. And you know, you can ask each other questions and uh, we still will have tons of stuff in the forum and we really want you there because in the forum, you can ask a question and lots of people see the answers to right. the questions in there. I'm glad it, you're mentioning that yeah. because um, the group is not really going to be for for questions for us to answer, um, like in the forum, because th in a Facebook group, the um, the questions, uh, the, the comments tend to fade away, go away. They, yeah. 
you know. Yeah. Whereas you know, in the forum, we can put the questions and they can stay and we there can for everybody else. Categorize them, and mm -hmm. and 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 Marcus is actually teaching me some ways to actually categorize some of the topics or questions inside mm -hmm. the Facebook group. Okay. And mm -hmm. so, uh, but anyway, the forum is going to be there, so we can still put lots of valuable stuff in there, and you can learn from. And we're primarily in the forum answering all of the questions and stuff. And the forum is a great way to support what we're doing. You know, for only ten dollars a month, even though the forum there's a lot of free stuff in the forum, mm -hmm. uh, it's a great way to you want to be a premium member and support us because we don't have a Patreon or anything like that. We just believe in having a forum where we can give you lots of value. So anyway, enough on that. Join the Facebook group. Go to facebook.com forward slash groups slash living in CR. Join the, the uh, Facebook group right now. We're excited to see you in, the, in that group. So let's get to answering questions uh, about Tina Maste and uh, a lot of very important things like, Oopie, <laughs> what is that all about? Okay. So, uh, hey, why don't we talk about that right now? You know, uh, Matter of fact, I asked a good friend, uh, and I says, hey, give me the scoop on what is the whole, oopie, oopie, you know, if you, depending on where you live at, when we lived in Morazan, you would hear that a lot, oopie, oopie, and it's a good thing, and it's a bad thing. I guess it depends on how you look at it. It's a good thing in that it, no matter where you live at, like in the city and in a lot of places, you've got gates and uh, people will come up to your gate. Ticos, that is. When I say people, Ticos will come up to your gate and they go, oopie, oopie. And what they want is they're trying to get your attention. They want you to come to the gate, talk to them. And 99% of the time, they're trying to sell you something. So I say it's a good thing because that means that, you know, Ticos are trying to make a little bit of money. They're not out there begging or trying to get something for free. Although you will get oopie, and it's some guy who is, uh, you know, trying to show you his uh, peg leg that might not be real, or show you his urine bag that might not be real, and it, it might be, you know. So you got con artists anywhere in the world. So you do have a few beggars that will come up, but most of the time it's someone trying to sell you vegetables and bananas and fresh fruit, or maybe they're cooking stuff, and they're trying to make a living. So there's nothing wrong with that. But depending on where you live at, it does happen a lot. And so it will drive you nuts. So uh, I asked a good friend, I says, hey, Rudy, I says, where did this oopé come from? And he's like, you know, I really don't know. I, I just have always heard it. And so he called his mom, who's 88 years old. <laughs> and she's like, I don't know. It's just always happened. I always heard my folks say, oopé, oopé. But there's such a stigma around oopé that more and more now you're beginning to hear people who are not selling anything and who are coming to your house for other reasons say, um, buenas, buenas. Mm -hmm. And so when they're saying buenas, they're generally not trying to sell you something. You know, they might be talking to you. But in one case, it's like the Jehovah Witnesses. I think they'll come by and they'll say buenas instead of upe. And, you know, they're, they're going to give you a track and talk to you about Jesus and, and church and, and stuff like that. You know, not a bad thing or anything. Yeah. And while I mentioned something um, here, do you want to go check? I hear an echo. I, I hear us playing. Oh, well, let me go check and see while you continue to talk yeah. to me. So I think Alan mentioned a little bit about why um, they're yelling at the gate. You know, most houses or a lot of houses have the fence and the gate. So it's not like they just can walk up to your door and ring the doorbell or knock on the doorbell. In fact, I don't know of any, I don't think we've stayed in any houses that had an actual doorbell. But uh, that's the way of just standing at the gate and calling out. And something that Alan mentioned, um, he said, you know, it could be dangerous, is that we have found, I think twice this has happened to us, someone in the middle of the night, you know, because we'll get up with the animals and, you know, just different things wake us up and in the middle of the night get up. And twice this has happened that someone will be outside by the gate. And when we see them, in fact, it was me one time and then it happened to you just, just a few days ago. But um, you, you see them, and when you look at them, they go, oopé, like, I think they're pretending that they were um, 
coming to inquire of you instead of you catching them looking around, you know, lurking around at your gate. So anyway, that's, I think, what, what he meant when he was saying um, it could be dangerous. So, and um, I have run into a few uh, Nicaraguans that were uh, selling things. You know, it's just a way, it's, it's different here. Um, in the United States, the days of the door-to-door -door salesman are gone. You just don't really see that anymore. You know, even Avon and, and different things um, have become where it's not door-to-door. -door. Part of that is the danger, I think, of, of going door-to-door, -door, plus uh, the technology. But it's still prevalent here in, in Costa Rica. Um, we've bought stuff. You know, they'll pass with a little fruit and vegetable cart and we'll buy um, some produce. Um, we bought a little picnic table and chairs that someone was walking around selling. But um, so, you know, it's not that it's a bad thing. It's just um, it's just yeah. different. And, and when you, you're not you, in the market to buy anything, it can right. be a little uh, it can be a little annoying, annoying yeah. especially, you know, for me, because I'm creating videos. Mm -hmm. And I need it to be quiet. Yeah, or and sometimes so I'll be on the telephone with someone, you know, yeah. and, and then, and also they're very persistent. You That's know? right. It's you almost can say, like. You have to say no several times. If, if, if you, I mean, you'll hear, okay, and I'll just like, Rebecca, just ignore them. And then five minutes later, it's like, you have to go tell them to stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know. Yeah. But I do find um, now that uh, when we say no thank you, no gracias, you know, they're very polite and yeah. just say, so, okay. You know, it's just something that you need to be aware of. And like Rebecca said, I mean, just a couple of nights ago, uh, you know, uh, I heard, uh, I, I couldn't sleep. We're in the city, as you know, it was loud, it was noisy. The dog w across the street was barking like crazy and I couldn't sleep. So I just got up and decided to work. So I'm working and it's now three o'clock in the morning and, and Nikki is sitting out the door and she barks. And so, of course, I get on the Nikki about barking so she didn't wake up the neighbors. So she stops immediately. But as soon as I open up the door to get on to her, because she had gone outside, well, then I, the guy at the gate goes, Oope. And I'm like, no, 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 it's three o'clock in the morning. I'm not coming to the gate. Talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> but... You know, upe at three o'clock in the morning is not a good sign. No, and that's not the usual. That's not the usual. You know, I think normally were... he, he was busted. He was busted scouting out the area, looking to see. Okay, so. Uh... Okay, is it back? All right, let us know if we're back. Looks like we had some technical issues there. Uh, it was buffering, so who knows? We had an internet yeah, issue. Yeah, and we have super fast internet now. <laughs> yeah, <all right. laughs> that's why we're doing our lives at at our new rental. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, it looks like we're back, and it looks like we're good to go. So anyway, great. So anyway, it's just important to know if you get an oupe in the middle of the night, that's not a good sign, and it's important that you do respond loud and clear so that, that they know somebody is home, and don't be stealing my tennis shoes outside my door. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway. That's the deal on that. So, hey, we want to answer all of your questions. You know, are you considering coming to Costa Rica? What's it like living in Costa Rica? Uh, you know, uh, hey, you got questions about Tina Maste. Now you know why Tina Maste is such a beautiful place uh, and the pros and cons about it. We want to answer your questions. So I'm going to scan through here and look at some of these questions because we want to answer all of your questions. But more importantly, we want you to join our live Facebook group because I just looked at it. And uh, man, I am just amazed already. You know, in our live face, in our face, in our <laughs> in our Facebook group, we got 21 people. Woohoo! So hey, join the Facebook group. We're excited to have you That's there. Awesome. Uh, take a moment to introduce yourself there. So we're excited. But um, hey, you've got lots of people who are on their way back. Uh, oh, John Way says, hey, you know, Starlink is gonna fix all that. Now I'm really hoping so. I hope I hear from them real soon because we're having a serious, serious challenge with trying to get internet mm -hmm. where we're going. Hey, we're going to get it there, uh, but it's a mm -hmm. matter of time. So I'm hoping that's gonna be resolved real soon, I hope. But anyway, hey, put your questions in the comments right now. What questions, what concerns? Because you know, there are some people that are saying, I've done a little bit of the checking and it's just not worth going to Costa Rica anymore. You know, they're borrowing all this money from the IMF. They're broke. Um, you know, the taxes are crazy high with the new 13% tax. Um, it, it just doesn't look like it's beneficial. What's the deal? 
And so, you know, really to give you the, the deal on that is, hey, you know, it's true that they are trying to borrow money from the IMF. I think they're trying to borrow $1.9 million, no, $1.9 trillion. And uh, are that's you a sure? lot of money. That's a lot of money. That's a, that's a lot of money. They're, Maybe they're you got to, that number wrong. I, I don't think it's wrong. I think it's $1.9 really? trillion. You know, uh, I'm not 100% certain on that. You know, I don't think I've ever been wrong, but I, I, I think I could be mistaken. <laughs> anyway. But they're, they're borrowing a lot of money. It hasn't been approved yet and won't get approved until June. But the, the fact is Costa Rica has been broke. They've been broke for many, many years. Uh, and unless they do something, that's not going to change anytime soon. And uh, they've been broke for many, 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 many years because of bad decisions that the government has made on high pensions and salaries. And so yeah. that's been that away for years. Nothing's going to change. And so I don't think, you know, they're trying to resolve that issue. So I don't think that's a problem. But, well, what I, what I think is different about um, the current situation and the borrowing of the funds is that the lenders are asking for specifics. I lied. And they what? It wasn't trillion. It was billion. That's I, that, I okay. said billion. You just heard wrong. Uh -huh, it, it was uh -huh. billion. <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, you know they're they're asking Costa Rica to put down in. Uh, what in laws <laughs> proof of ways that they're going to be able to pay this yeah, money I, back? How, you know, gonna how are they going to pay this? We, we'll loan you this money, but you got to do a few things to pay it back. Right. I mean, come on, so, any bank does that, right? Of course, right. And and so the strategies that they're having to come up with, the financial strategies, have to do with taxes and um, maybe changing things for foreigners. Uh, you know, taxing income that they haven't taxed in the past. So all these things are, are coming up that aren't pleasant for anybody. But, you know, they, they have to do something. You can't just keep borrowing money and uh, paying it off with the next loan. So uh, they've been doing that for a long time. So. Indeed. Now, I've got a, got a question here that uh, M. Rodden says, well, what town has good internet service? Because my husband works from home and my kids have uh, school online. And, you know, that's a good question. Now, uh, almost any town that you move into, so long that town is not in the middle of nowhere, almost any town actually has internet, okay? Yeah. Um, it's the speed and the reliability that's right. the issue. You know, uh, and they have installed fiber optic in many, many, many places. So it is getting better and better. Uh, in know. fact, we see the lines. The lines are being run all over the place, but they're not actually um, running the service to houses, right? Right now, just right. yet. They, just they, yet. They're, they're doing all, the groundwork. Right. For they're the they're laying optic. the foundation. They got, like Rebecca said, lines are going up everywhere. And there's one place that we saw they installed some new lines. Been there for months, and we're trying to get internet at that particular place. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are some little bitty towns that are out in the middle of nowhere. They have internet, but like they're out of ports. Uh, because with the whole COVID situation, more and more people are working from home, which means more and more people who didn't have internet before are getting internet. Well, uh, you know, it's places where only EC or Colby has, has internet government owned, and they're not concerned with losing money or making money. So they're not installing more ports for people to plug into. Right. And didn't you find out that, um, how far is it, how many meters from the road do they go and then after that they won't extend right. service? Right, so it really just all depends on like if the line is there. If there is a regular, what's called a copper line, it's called ADSL, internet line. If, it's, if you are 400 meters away from that ADSL line, they won't give you internet. And if that ADSL line is, you know, so far away from the main hookup. So that's why if you're in town and you're within, you know, two or three kilometers, you can normally get internet if you're two or three kilometers from the main hookup. But if you're further away from that, well, then you may not get internet, which means you now have to try to get wireless internet from like Colby, uh, I mean, from Claro. Well, even Colby has wireless internet or you got to get a private entrepreneur. So you can get some decent internet from mm -hmm. several different places. So working from home is not a problem. We've been working from home for since we've been here uh, and and we live mostly in remote areas. Right, you just have some challenges. Um, I think the main thing is if you do get um, a good speed or even buying from a, um, an entrepreneur, a private person sell, reselling the internet, they're buying the internet from uh, 
Costa Rica, from Colby. And the problem is that the, the sharing and um, the infrastructure, trees will fall, things will happen. And, you know, it's just, it's just part of it. Whereas um, in the U.S., there are a lot of places that the Internet hardly ever goes out. But here it's kind of a... Um, I wouldn't, it doesn't go out every day, but. No, it doesn't go out every day, but you know, the, it will and blink, so it, and so it has to restart, and you know, it's just not yeah. as stable. But you can, pretty much, if you're working online, hey, you're not gonna have a problem, that you, really. Yeah, it, it's just, just headaches yeah, that you, you gotta put up with. But you, you know, can overcome, and the beauty of the country, and the peace, and the tranquility far outweighs. So, like, yeah. um, the last place we were at before this place, we were, what, 800 meters from from the road yeah. and they only went 400 meters. And so. so we couldn't get regular internet, which would have been way cheaper than have pay $105 for very slow internet. Right. So now another question here, and Tim asked, well, how's the COVID pandemic in Costa Rica? And you know, uh, Costa Rica has really done a, a, from, uh, a fabulous job, in my opinion, on how they've handled the whole COVID situation. Presently, at the moment, uh, COVID has actually uh, the cases. The number the of cases. cases have spiked a little bit, and so COVID has re-implemented some of the restrictions, driving restrictions, and things like that. They're kind of coming back on the number of people inside restaurants and churches and bars and things like that. Mm -hmm. You know, in other words, they're responding to the higher numbers. So uh, what I can say is that overall, Costa Rica has done a phenomenal job and has been better than a lot of places worldwide. Mm -hmm. And as of now, um, you are not required to have a COVID, uh, a negative COVID test to come into Costa Rica. Um, you do have to have the proof of health insurance, travel insurance that covers um, if you were to get COVID. Um, the CAHA system, that's the, the security, I mean the um, social medical system, is having some difficulties right now. Uh, they have a lot of cases, so it's yeah. um, yeah, it's it, unexpected and, because and I, the numbers had gone way, way yeah. down. We thought that it was totally out. And so we really don't know why it has spiked. You know, now just from my own opinion, I don't know how much truth that is or how much that is you know, uh, news, trying to push people for more vaccines. You know, I, we don't know all the truth to the matter is. I just know that Costa Rica has done a really great job in handling it. And I, I predict it's probably going to come back down because they really have done a great job. So, you know, uh, all in all, I think it's, they've done a, a fabulous job with the whole COVID situation going on. Right. Uh, we've seen, you know, in all of the businesses, it, it's a pain in the butt, but, you know, I'll go shopping and I'll, I'll go to one place. There's a sink out there. Wash your hands, get some alcohol, go to the next place. I just washed my hands 10 minutes ago. <laughs> Wash my hands, alcohol, you know, but everybody uh, and everyone's with masks, you know, so they've done a great job on that. It's yeah. a pain, you know, everybody knows it, but they, they're doing what they can to yeah. keep people safe. And the hand washing certainly doesn't hurt anybody. That's right. <laughs> so. You know, it's just, I wash my hands 20 times. I don't have palm olive hands anymore. <laughs> no. So anyway, anyway, here's another great question. Cause Dawn says, Hey, um, you know, um, what rural or mountain area is relatively safe to live in? My dream is to live off grid with solar and a small vegetable garden. Well, Don, I got great news for you, okay? Because uh, that's our dream, and we will eventually be living very off grid, living with solar, having our, you know, uh, being as uh, self sufficient as possible. So here's the short answer uh, to that. Almost anywhere, if you live rural, it's going to be safe. And the reason that is, is because there's hardly anybody there. You know, most of the uh, Ticos and the locals, they're living close to town uh, and they live right on the road. And of course, that's because they can get electricity and they can get water. If you're going to live rural, well then, geez, you know, uh, most Ticos are not, most anybody's not going to live rural because they need electricity and if you can afford a solar system it's going to be safe because nobody else is out there so that's good news for you okay so 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 that's a plus 
All right. Hey, I agree. Thank you very much, Greg. I am being a little bit dehydrated and it looks like <laughs> I need more. So I do want to take a moment to say thank you very much for everybody that does support us on our channel. And if you want to know how thank you can you. support us, you can click that dollar sign in the chat button and you can support us uh, in any way that you want because, um, you know, you can support us, uh, support our raincoat fun, our city slicker fun when we go out for rides uh, or our apple juice fun. Uh, Rebecca, her water is very expensive. So anyway, <laughs> anyway, uh, the so water is so good here. <laughs> the water is extremely good here. Yeah. You know, in most cases, especially if you live in the rural areas. So anyway, I hope that answers your question, Don. If you're in a rural area, almost anywhere is going to be safe. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't know how I would pick. I mean, we already knew where we wanted to be um, because of other extenuating circumstances yeah. we, we found out where we wanted to be in the first month that we was here yeah and and i just call that favor um and we've been all over the place in costa rica and comparing everything to where we want to be at and while we have found some really nice places we haven't found anything better than where we're going to go at i hope very 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 soon I just got to get that last step and that's the internet there yeah but if we were just coming here and trying to decide Oh my goodness, there's so many, so many beautiful places, so much property for sale um, and, and available. Like we said, even if you, I mean, if you see a place and there's not a for sale sign, because a lot of the places don't have it, but um, if you just see a place and like you admire the view and it looks like it's somebody's farm or cow field or whatever, find out who owns it and ask them if they'll, they'll sell it to you because we found almost anybody even though they don't have a for sale sign once they start talking to you and find out that you're a foreigner and you're wanting to move here they have a piece of property they want to sell you yeah so. absolutely uh by the way thank you greg <laughs> but yes you know the um you know someone commented that rivas is a great place to live mm -hmm. absolutely and uh, rivas you know and it's just it, it's another gringo or expat hot spot uh, gorgeous place because it's only 20 minutes outside of town. Mm -hmm. I found a place here just the other day. We live right now in the city, which is, I mean, we're 10 minutes away from the heart of San Isidro, and it's an area called Pedregoso. Pedregoso. And, say it again. Pedregoso. Okay, she knows how to talk. I don't. <laughs> no, so, I, not really. I just. So, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> there are some fine houses down the street, okay? some nice places and I found a road that you know I'm telling you if you want to live in Costa Rica there are so many off roads back roads beautiful places where you can buy property and you can establish a great place so I want to do a video and do a road tour on that spot great places you know the only disadvantage is that the further away you get from town the less likely to find internet but you can find internet from a private entrepreneur right because like Tina Maste is very popular and very much uh, demand because of its proximity to the beach and to San Isidro. But there are areas like that all over the place, like we're saying, you know, okay, Rivas, it's further away from the beach, but if you're more into uh, hiking, you know, the mountains and so forth, it's really close to the Chirpo National Park. And the, the little roads that go out from there that nobody knows about, you know, but then you deal with the the condition of the roads. Mm -hmm. uh, like you were saying, you deal with electricity maybe not going that far out or the internet going not going that far out. But I'm telling you, we rode down uh, the, the place that you're talking about, um, and what did we see? Wow. What did you spot? I saw the a stinking fiber. internet port and fiber, fiber internet down that road. Yeah. I'm like... He was like, what? It's over here? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, so, you know... <laughs> Uh, Costa Rica is making some phenomenal changes as far as improving their internet. They're really doing a fabulous, fabulous job. Mm -hmm. So here shortly, within a couple of years, you're not going to have a problem getting internet in Costa Rica, in my opinion. Now, here's another great question. You know, George says, hey, what about border runs? Hey, you know, border runs can be a pain in the butt but it's something you have to live with until you get your residency. So George says, you know, do you have to bring U.S. dollars for cash to pay for the fees or will Kelowna's work? I use Kelowna's for almost everything. Big tip right here. If you're taking notes, big tip. 
if you're, no matter what country you're in. If you're in Japan, you pay for everything in yen. If you're in Costa Rica, you pay for everything in colonas. If you're in Panama, you pay for everything in, in dollars, Panamanian dollars and US dollars. No matter what country you go to, you pay for it in that country's uh, currency. currency, okay? And you'll save money that way. So in Costa Rica, I pay for every single thing in colonas and I save money. Uh, when we go to Panama, I bring US dollars but I pay for, you know, when I'm stamping out, it's $7 for the tax. Well, if I have the dollars, I'll pay for it. But I can pay for it in colonas, okay? So, but when I'm in Panama and I'm shopping in Panama, I pay for everything in Panama with U.S. dollars to save money. Because if I don't, if I went to Panama and I paid in colonas, whenever they convert it over, I lose a lot of money in that conversion. Always pay in the country's currency. Big tip. That is worth a thumbs up, mm -hmm. okay? But you know, it's not worth um, converting your money. Let's say like you're doing a border run in uh, Nicaragua. Well, just stay right there by the border and um, you know. That's right, if you're just only gonna there stay there. for a day or two. Uh, and, uh, right. And so. You know, so it, it really, I guess, depends on the situation. Yeah. Now, George says, you know, he's heard that when you pay fees to enter Nicaragua, you need US dollars. Now, I've gone into Nicaragua before, and um, yeah, they didn't require you. They didn't dollars. require it. You know, a lot of places, even in Costa Rica, they want you to pay in dollars. Why? Well, because they're going to con you. The dollar is worth way more than the colonas, okay? And I always tell them, look, I don't have U.S. dollars. I might be American, but all of my money is in colonas. How much is it in colonas, okay? So, you know, people always try to con you. You know, the last place I rented, the guy said, well, hey, uh, it's $200. I was like, no. Now, I might be American, but I'm in Costa Rica, so I spend Colonas. Yeah. How much is it in Colonas? He wanted 200 bucks. Is that $100,000 100, in Colonas? He agreed, and I said, okay, I'll pay you 100,000 Colonas every month. Always, always, always. Let me say that again. Always negotiate the purchase in Colonas. You will save money. Right, and if you can pay cash, sometimes you save money. At That's the, right. The different stores. but. Um, I was thinking about, he's asking about the border. You know, the border runs um, have been some of the places that have put, seen potential conning the yeah. most. Yeah. Because when we first got here, if it would have been just me, because I, I can be very naive and gullible, not so much anymore. But um, if, if Alan wouldn't have been with me, I would have fallen for so many uh, cons because they're so convincing. And, you know, and I didn't know. But you go up there, they tell you, you have to have this and you need to have that and come, I'll help you. And, you know, it, it can be a frightening um, and intimidating experience. So you just really, before you go do your border run, there's plenty of information on the internet. There's plenty of um, chat groups, uh, the U.S. Embassy website, you know, get the facts and that way you don't feel... Um, Un, you know, you're not uninformed or that you might fall for some of these schemes because I tell you, they can be very convincing. And um, That's right. they tell you, you have to have this. You and gotta have this, you gotta have that. You gotta get, you, you, I'll get you in and out real yeah, quick. And they, All it's gonna cost you is $100. Yeah, they yeah. act like your best friend. That's right. And I'm don't gonna help fall you. for it. I'm gonna help you out for free. Yeah, let me, let me take you. But they're really looking yeah. for money. You, you do not need the assistance you, of anyone right. to stamp in and out. You can go to the to the people yourself and you know you just you don't need someone's help yeah okay so let me pause for a moment because i see that we have a lot of people on right now so i just want to real quick make the announcement again that you know we got something really cool that we want to announce and since there's a whole lot of people here right now we got a new Facebook group that that is going live right now. Marcus is helping us go join our Facebook group right now. I just put the URL and the link inside the chat box. And if you can't see the chat box, it's simply go to facebook.com/groups. That's plural. facebook.com/groups. 
slash living in CR. So join our Facebook group right now. Marcus is over there and he's, he's approving people. In order to get approved, you do have to answer a few quick questions and you have to agree to all rules that says that you're not going to be a troll, you're not going to be rude, and you're not going to be a turd because, you know, we just flush turds. So anyway, you got to be nice. You got to have fun in the group. That's right. You got to have fun. We believe in having a good time, sharing good information. So go to the Facebook group right now. Join. We greatly, greatly appreciate you. Lots of people are joining, but I wanted to make that announcement real quick. And let's get back to the question. So like Rebecca said, you don't need help stamping out when you go to the border. And uh, another quick question, because Brian says, well, hey, look, we're going to be there for about 13 days. How much money should we bring? And, you know, look, Brian, whenever you do come, you don't have to have a lot of cash. Matter of fact, I, I probably wouldn't bring any more than $100 in cash, but I would have enough cash that I could go to a bank and I could convert it over into to Kelowna so that you can save a ton of money. So, good question. Yeah, you know, now, some restaurants um, in touristy areas don't take anything, you know, they only take cash. So whether it's Kelowna's or dollars, you know, you can't use your debit card or credit card. But that's few places. But still, notice, take notice before you sit down and order your food, uh, kind of look around or ask, you know, do you, if, if you don't have a lot of cash on you, make sure that they do take the credit card. Because, That's right, because some places don't take a credit card, okay? And th their signs aren't very big, you know. Um, in fact, there'll be signs all over the wall, very, um, you know, just a, a conglomerate of, of signs and a little bitty sign that says, no credit card, <laughs> cash That's only. Right. So, so. You do, and, 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 and you have to understand that's because it, it does cost them a whole, whole lot of money to take credit cards and credit card fees and stuff. So some people just simply take cash. So you do need to be aware of that. But, mm -hmm. you know, if, if I was coming here for two weeks, okay, if you was coming here for two weeks, how much money would you allocate so that you could have a good time here for two weeks? What do you mean to spend or just yeah, to have just, the cash? Just to spend, oh, not just goodness. cash, but let's let's just say in dollars. If I was coming here for two weeks, how much money would you spend for two weeks just on a reconnaissance mission just to check out Costa Rica? Well, gosh, that, that all depends. I mean, okay, if you want to go do any kind of excursion, the excursions are anywhere from Excursions could be expensive, but let's say we're not going to do excursions because we're on a reconnaissance mission to find out where I want to live at. I'm not coming here to vacation. I'm coming here to say, where do I want to live? And I'm checking out places to live. I'd I'm have to sit down with pen and paper to try to figure that out. She's an accountant. So <laughs> I'll tell you, for me, $2,000, I could probably do it on $1,000 in two weeks. Because all I need is, uh, you know, I'm going to stay in some, bed in, in some Airbnbs, yeah. which can be very cheap. Uh, I need a little bit of food, but I'm gonna buy, I'm gonna go to Walmart and I'm gonna cook a lot of my own stuff. But I can go to the restaurants and try out food. On a thousand to two thousand dollars for two weeks, you can have a good reconnaissance right. mission and find out, you know, what some good areas. Okay, yeah, now, but, but that's could, excluding a rental vehicle though, because a rental vehicle can be that. very expensive. You know, you're saying that, but you're um, right. You're right, because we live on. You know, we have a budget. We live on a thousand dollars. Of course, anytime we go do anything extra, that's uh, coming out of our savings. That's above the budget. But if you know, we have our own vehicle and stuff, and um, there are Uber, uh, you know, Uber um, drivers here. There are taxis, um, so you don't have to, and the the bus. So you don't have to rent a car, but it sure makes it a lot oh, easier and nicer gosh, yes. to go see, especially you know. if you're going to go see houses that are for rent or for sale, because a lot of them, um, if you're looking to kind of, you know, be out and uh, yeah, away yeah, from, from yeah. people, four-wheel drives are necessary and not all taxis or Ubers That's have right. uh, four-wheel right. drive. You know. And, you know, I'm glad you brought that up. She brought something up accidentally. You know, you can get an Uber. And I highly, highly suggest if you come here, make sure that you download the Uber app onto your phone because uh, taxis can be expensive and taxis can con you, okay? Uh, and they can set their own rate. But with an Uber, you can get an Uber. And hey, we use Uber right here in the city. You know, um, our vehicle's been in the shop. And so we just get on the app and we use Uber and man, you can get an Uber cheap, you know, and you can go all over the place and you know how much it's going to be before you ever get that Uber. Okay. So, you know, use it now. 
Uber's not available in a lot of remote small areas, but it's getting more and more popular. That's true. It's not available like when we lived. Yeah, when we lived in San Vito, when we lived in, you know, there's some smaller towns, they didn't have Uber, but Uber is becoming more and more popular. So download the Uber app and use Uber instead of the regular taxis. You'll save a ton of money. Okay, because I don't know how many times I've gotten out of the airport and the taxi is like, taxi, 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 taxi. Oh, gringo, going to make a lot of money. Uh, only $300,000. I'll take you home. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, use an Uber. You'll save a lot of money. Okay. So anyway, uh, and, and make sure that you download Waze. And Marcus just gave me an update. He says, uh, hey, there's a lot of people. I think he said already 25 people has joined the Facebook group. Okay. So join the Facebook group, facebook.com slash forward slash groups living in CR and uh, join a group. Okay. So I hope I answered that question. Um, oh, look, you know, it is sometimes challenging. And someone said, how much is it for a decent used vehicle? Hey, surprisingly, I mean, when we bought our vehicle, 20 years old, cost us four thousand dollars wasn't it mm -hmm. so you will pay a lot of money for a used vehicle but i have to say that the used vehicles here uh, are not nearly as worn out as the used vehicles you might have in the united states you know in the united states you know i used to think uh, any vehicle over a hundred thousand miles was no good and oh and and, uh, and that's because you drive it so fast in the united states here vehicles aren't driven that fast because it's so mountainous and so hilly and so uh, vehicles do last a whole lot longer here, in yeah. my opinion. Okay, so yeah, I think a, a, a young car is a hundred thousand miles. That's here. right, that's right, so, you know. Yeah. So, anyway, or a hundred thousand kilometers, you know. Kilometers. So, anyway, uh, you can get uh, a decent used vehicle, in my opinion, anywhere from four thousand to eight thousand dollars. Okay, now I'm telling you in dollars because that's just how it transfers over in Kelowna's. You know, you're gonna often see that they're gonna say it's in a million Kelowna's. A million Kelowna's typically translates today or converts over to about 1,600 bucks. So you'll often see a used vehicle that might be uh, three million Kelowna's, which is gonna be you know around 5,000, you know, anywhere from three million to six million Kelowna's for a used vehicle. So that just gives you an idea. But so that you have a better understanding, hey, you can buy a dependable used vehicle anywhere from about four to six, eight thousand yeah. dollars for a used vehicle, okay? I'll give you an idea. And I've noticed in San Isidro, uh, a lot more uh, new um, used car dealerships. So right off the main highway, there's, there's several of them. When we first got here, there were very few used car dealerships anywhere, except for in uh, San Jose and the metropolitan area. Now, now let me bring up something real quick here because Greg uh, put in a comment and he says you might want to bring a box of mini you know, candy bars to tip people with because uh, they don't have a good selection of candy bars in Costa Rica. And I always bring lots uh, and uh, he always brings the lots and it's a nice way to get a stronger bar drink. And hey, that's a good <laughs> tip. But as we're talking about tips... Uh, in Costa Rica, something that you need to know about. You know, in the United States, we've been tipping all the time, and it's kind of considered rude if you don't tip your waitress, even if you had bad service. Really? What's up with that? Anyway, in Costa Rica, the tip is automatically applied to your bill. So regardless of whether you get good service, bad service, and no service at all, you're going to pay a tip, which is normally around anywhere from 10 to 20%, and I think it's generally 20%, isn't it? I'm not 100% not, okay. sure on that. So the tip is going to automatically be included. So you don't have to put a tip on the table. Uh, and really, you should not put any additional tip down there because they're doing their job. It's not the norm in Costa Rica to tip in Costa Rica. It's not the norm, and you should never, ever try to change the norm in any country, okay? Mm -hmm. And in a lot of countries, it's considered rude that you tip someone for practically doing their job. And in Costa Rica, they put it on the receipt, so you're going to pay a tip regardless, okay? So, but hey, hey I, I agree with uh, Greg there. If you want to bring some candy bars to tip and get stronger bar drinks, hey, go for it. <laughs> Matter of fact, I've heard some people who, when they're going for border runs, you know, they'd go out into Panamanian and they would buy the little bitty things of, uh, of alcohol and they would give it to the guy when they're checking in. Maybe kind of grease the wheels on stamping in and out of the country. 
hey, maybe it worked for him. I don't know. We but anyway, never tried to do that. I never tried to do that. So just a thought, okay? All right. So uh, lots of great comments and input. So I'm, I'm going to scroll through here. Rebecca, you keep them company while I'm looking at some of these <laughs> questions and comments here, okay? Well, I'll say something about the candy bars. Um, it's quite warm here. Of course, it's Costa Rica. And most grocery stores, I don't know that I've been in a grocery store that's air conditioned. Most of them are open air. And um, maybe, I don't know, maybe Walmart has air conditioning. But um, anyway, most of them are open air and just have big fans. So you will see candy bars in little coolers, just like you would go to buy um, a soda, you know, a drink or a cold beer in the, the freezer, the cooler section, you, they have little bitty, little tiny coolers for the candy bars. So that's just something that I thought was, you know, odd. I, I was like, man, it's that warm that your candy bars will melt. Yeah, well, you know, a, a very interesting thing, because like you said, you know, in most of the little bitty stores, they don't have air conditioning, and so the candy bars are melting, and they don't have a big candy selection. But, um, you know, what is very interesting is that uh, in the United States, no matter where you go to in a convenience store, there's candy and gum everywhere. That is not typical yeah. in Costa Rica. There's not Rica. a good selection of gum either. No. I mean, you can go into a little pulperia, and it's called pulperia if I'm pronouncing that right, and it's a little bitty mom and pop convenience store, and there won't be a bit of candy in that thing. Okay? And why? Because a lot of that candy is going to melt. But some candy is really not melable, but you, you won't find gum. You just don't see that well, kind big, of stuff. It's a big extra. Yeah, know, it is a, a huge it's extra. It's a luxury kind you know? of thing. So, uh, you know, you'll see a lot of chips and plantain chips and stuff like that, but you don't see candy and you don't see gum. So, you, you know, like Rebecca, you know, likes to chew gum. I like to chew gum once in a while. You go to the pulperia, there is no gum, okay? Yeah. So, the bigger stores have gum, but still, they still don't have a large selection. Right, it's a cultural difference here, mm -hmm. okay? Big cultural difference difference and that's one of the things that I will be posting on our new Facebook group is I can create these little bitty short videos and I can kind of explain some of the cultural differences kind of giving you an idea of why it's like this and why it's like that giving you cultural differences you know just kind of get you prepared for when you come into Costa Rica okay uh, great questions um, now uh, I'm not quite sure. James here says, how are you going to find me a place to live if you're not there? And so in, 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 in San Isidro. So James, you know, and that's one of the things that we can help you with. You can contact us in the Facebook group uh, or in the uh, forum, or you can uh, sign up to our newsletter. All those links are in the description below to where you can click the link in the description and sign up where you can contact us, and we can help you find a rental. Obviously, there's a, that's a service that you pay for, and just depending on what we need to do for you, we talk to you and figure that out. And so, and we have some other people that that uh, help us out in doing that. So, mm -hmm. if you're looking for something like that, and you need a service because it is very difficult for you to find a place mm -hmm. before coming here. They're just not on the internet. Uh, another good question that I saw was, do you recommend us talking to a realtor before going or should we wait till you get here? Hey, look, this is just the facts, okay? You can talk to a realtor before you get here, but remember, a realtor works on commission. Let's pretend I'm a realtor and you are a gringo with a lot of money. Do you think I'm going to show you a place that is going to be $100,000 or am I going to show you a place that's $500,000 and I'm working on commission? Ah, oh, duh. I want to make a big commission. So I'm going to show you the expensive place when in reality, if you come down here and you got boots on the ground, you're going to find the exact same type of property for half the money. Okay, so... Hey, realtors are there to make money. They're not your friend, okay? So I suggest making sure you come to Costa Rica. It never hurts to talk to a realtor, but come to Costa Rica and you can save thousands upon thousands of dollars by uh, looking around and finding places, you know, making contact yourself. A little more work, but hey, realtor, and, and look, not all realtors are bad. There are some realtors that will definitely help you when you tell them, this is my budget, okay? Right. Um there are realtors that 
or recommended like if you get into any of these chat groups or um uh what else just people ask ask somebody to recommend a realtor to you because they're not all you know out to just make that the money so there yeah. are some good ones out there yeah, that will you tell yeah. them your need and my recommendation is start from the united states if you can um i mean start from your home country if you can find somebody to talk to and just to get a feel um we we did that before coming here and so we at least had a, a an initial place to stay we only stayed at that place for one month but we arrived in this country already having uh made a, a rental a, right yeah because we didn't have anyone to help us find a rental and in reality we paid way too much for that furnished rental which is renting out a whole lot cheaper now because we got the gringo price we did however we arrived in this country not knowing anyone not having any connections except the realtor and so you know he helped us with um you know going to to look at other places you know he he took us the next morning to the place that we were renting and then he continued to work with us to show us other places that were available. That's so. right. So it's not all bad. It can be a good thing. And you have to keep in mind, if a realtor is going to show you, obviously the price has to go up so he can get a commission. It's only fair, right? You're paying for that service. And so you don't have to did. stay there forever. I That's mean, right. we paid a high price for the first month that we were here. And That's then right. That's after right. that, we looked for, our, for something now, uh, yes. <laughs> Jan Janelle asked a really good question, and she says, is it true that there are no addresses in Costa Rica so you're not able to get mail, etc.?" True and not true. Absolutely, there is no 911 addresses that you might be used to in your country. You know, the address system here, you know, is I live 50 meters east of the post office, uh, turn right at the giant mango tree that has a dog chained to it, okay? And our house is the first white house on the left. That is an, an actual address here in Costa Rica, okay? However, if the post office moves, which it has happened, then did your address just change? So, no, there are no 911 address systems here. However, you can get mail, and what I would advise is that there are what's called the corral or the post office in Costa Rica. They do have very few uh, post office boxes that you can rent and they will give you an address and you can put all your mail in there. Most Costa Ricans don't get mail and so they don't have a need for a post office box. But yes, you can go to the local post office. You can rent a post office box. They will put your mail in there and uh, they even say that, you know, if you get a package, we'll put a little slip in there and we'll call you. I've never gotten a call, okay? So... You always uh, have to go check. <laughs> you always have to go check. And then I would go check and there wouldn't be a pink slip in there, but they would recognize me and they'd say, oh, wait, 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 you got a package. Why didn't you put the slip in there? <laughs> yeah, that's Costa Rica. So it's just something to know, but yes, you can get mail, okay? Yeah, but the mail system is quite different from the United States. You know, in the U.S., the mail passes, you know, delivers mail almost every day, except Sundays, and I think it's changed now. Um, some places are closed on Saturdays and so forth. But here, they have um, a little guy on a motorcycle that uh, he doesn't go every day. No. I mean, we just see him every now and then, and it's like that in the rural areas for sure. I hardly ever see somebody delivering mail. That's right. So I, I don't ever. know what the rules are as to what piece of mail actually ever gets delivered. You know, I think, I, I don't know this for f factual, but I think the guy that delivers mail delivers it to businesses, but I'm not 100% certain on that, okay? So I don't know who gets well, delivered mail and who doesn't. When we stayed at that um, house sitting in Carmona, they, they would, got every their mail. now and then their mail would come maybe once every two weeks they the little guy on the motorcycle would come by blow toot his horn and at the gate and go out and get the mail you know that's a good question because uh, uh sandra says well what happens in the case of an emergency you know can the ambulance find you what if you have an app a heart attack well I, I that's a good question i have read an article recently that they are working on trying to get better addresses because um, they said that the fire department 
and the ambulance services have a hard time. You know, uh, they will sometimes not be as efficient, of course, because they can't quite find where you're at, where, you know, yeah. I mean, it, it's not uncommon, you know, you, uh, they, you know, we talked about Uber earlier. Well, they have Uber Eats and that's becoming more and more popular so that you can call Uber Eats and they will deliver your food. Mm -hmm. So it's not unpopular for the motorcycle to be going down your road and he's honking his horn and he's going, oh, Upe, Upe. He's trying to find out where so-and-so lives so he can deliver your pizza because there's just not a 911 address system. Right, now something that I have used recently, and I don't know if the ambulance services um, use Waze, but that would be a, a good way, because you can actually do a little, what is it, a pin drop or a pinpoint? Um, yeah, you can send your location. Send your location, yeah. You know, but the so, good news is that practically everybody, even emergency services, police, they use WhatsApp. So you could, uh, you know, get your pin location right. from Waze, send it to them via WhatsApp, and they could find you. That's right. Almost everybody uses WhatsApp. That's right. So, so that's that's something that you can indeed yeah. do. Okay. But it is a concern, a genuine concern. I've heard more than one person talk about that. So what's been recommended is um, if you are somebody who thinks you might be needing ambulance services to go to your local um, Red Cross. Yeah, Red Cross or the um, the Ebias, is, if I'm saying that right, yeah. the local clinic, the local um, fire station, and tell them, introduce yourself and, and give them your address. That's right. You know. That's right. You know, so. because, you know, and so, you know, you, you know, if you're older, it's probably good for you to live closer by, or like Rebecca says, go introduce yourself so they know yeah. and let them know where you live at, you yeah. know. If you're pregnant, give them, the, give them you know, all that I mean, information. anything, probably anybody. And it's also suggested that when you come here to live, to register at the embassy, the United States embassy. Oh, yeah, that's always very advisable yeah. to register at the embassy. Let them know that you're here, uh, your location, if your location changes, notify them. Um, it's just a good idea. And Sins and Ski says, you know, another way is that you can use the uh, the Waze app and take a photo of where you're at and forward it to the person that that you're that's needing to find your address. Right. Uh, and you know, with the Waze app, you're practically sending your location, which yeah. makes it easy. And I can say we have never been certain of what our address is if we're just coming up with it. Like somebody would ask us, and we don't know. You know, we're having to say. You know, turn at the greenhouse you yeah, know, you next know, to the big tree. But w the way that you can find out the official address that um, maybe the ambulance service and the police would recognize is off of your um, electric bill or your uh, internet bill. You know, they they have to put something. In fact, when you go well, to get yeah, but service, wait there because even even when we've had to do that. You know, they've asked me what my address right. was, but then and we put would it get on it, there. We'd get it from whoever was renting before. Well, yeah, or... but there's several times they're getting it from someone, and it's not an official address because, you know. Yeah, I said official. That's that's a loose term. It's not really official. It's yeah. just we try to find out from neighbors, like what are they using, or from the pre people who were renting before. What address did you use? You know, it's something to think about when you first arrive at a place. Yeah. Try to get the uh, the official address that yeah. will be recognized. Yeah. So You know, so you just have to understand. And, you know, we're used to saying turn left at this house. And, and, and here they're used to saying turn west, turn east, go north. That's you right. Know. They don't even use left and That's right. right. So you it see. does make it a little bit difficult, okay? So that, it's just things for no. James says, well, how's the weather today? And it, it, it is the rainy season. Rainy season started early, but the weather today has been really nice. In uh, San Isidro, we're right in the heart of San Isidro. The weather is fairly nice. Kind of stays pretty consistent. Uh, it never gets too hot. It never gets too cold. And uh, today we're very fortunate that it's not raining on us. Yeah, I'd say the weather is the biggest draw for me. Uh, that continual temperature and uh you can just enjoy the outdoors, you know, year round. So yeah. Now Lachey says, "What's the best way to find a property short term for a couple of months?" That is a good question. 
and, and a lot of ways, now, if you go to our forum and you can join the forum for free, there is a place in there where there's a PDF and you can download and it has links to a lot of the real estate places that we use. But a quick way is to actually go to Airbnb. And if you go to Airbnb, there you'll find places that are Airbnbs. Uh, that's how Rebecca found this place. No, th this one was oh, actually. Uh, that's in... right. It was on another one. Yeah. But she did look on but Airbnb. We did find three places that we narrowed it down to, and two were from Airbnb, and the other was from, can't say pronounce it in in car in two, car two to or something. Yeah. But anyway, the the um those websites are in the forum, and uh, we did find this house off of a website that we have listed. In the forum. That's so. right. That's right. So, but, but you can check Airbnb, and these I, people will rent. You know, you know, a month at a time in mm -hmm. short term. So that's a quick way to find a short term rental. Yeah, I would definitely um, use Airbnb for if your initial uh, coming to stay because you can pay. You know, you don't have to worry about the currency exchange or anything like that. Um, you don't have to worry about taking out a wad of cash to pay your rent. It's all done online. You can look at reviews, which are very important. Always read the reviews on a place, um, you know, good and bad before you, before you decide to rent. Um, most, a lot of people, you know, they're already used to foreigners. So a lot of them speak um, foreign languages and... Uh, I, don't know, I think Airbnb is just the way to go to start off for sure. Yeah, to start off to find something. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Craig asked a really good question. He says, now you mentioned always pay in the local currency. Well, all the property seems to be listed in, in dollars, USD dollars. You're absolutely right. Is this an exception or do you have a tip on handling real estate prices? So, yeah, whenever you look at websites online, you're going to see everything is listed in US dollars. And that's because they all want the US dollar because the US dollar is always worth a lot more money. So when you're buying a piece of property, obviously we're talking about large chunks of money. And so you're gonna have to transfer that money in US dollars. However, once you get down here and you talk to people, you're gonna find properties that are listed in Kelowna's, okay? So it really depends on where you find it listed at. Yeah. And if you're, if it's a website that is um, advanced, it'll have the option to show the prices in Kelowna's or in dollars, you know, for, for your ease. So most of the time when I'm looking, I put it in dollars so that I can tell right off. So you, you, about, you're more familiar yeah, so with what it's going to cost is going to be. Yeah, I don't now, have to do the calculation. Here's something that you do need to understand. Um, you know, when you're looking at property, try to find you a good trusted Tico friend, and when you see a property you're interested in, have that person go and inquire on as far as how much it is. Because true story, not very long ago, I saw this one piece of property, and just to prove a point, you know, I had a Tico friend go and uh, inquire, call the phone number, ask how much the property was. A little bitty tiny lot, they wanted eight million uh, Kelowna's. Eight million Kelowna's just loosely, uh, uh, Converted over was about eight million. Was about sixteen, fifteen to sixteen thousand dollars for this tiny lot. Well, I waited about three days. I turned around and contacted the exact same person, exact same phone number, and they quoted me a price. Since I'm gringo, nine million. So hey, just for being gringo, I get to pay two thousand dollars extra. Woohoo! Thank you. So you yeah. you know you. And that's not happen. That's happened to other people too. It's not just us saying no, that. No, it's not just us. So it happens so. a lot. So you do want to be very very careful. Yeah. So yes, you're going to find properties that are listed in Kelowna's, but if it's online, most of the time it's going to be listed in dollars. Yeah. So you just have to understand. And you know, even if it's listed in dollars, and if you're here and your money is in Kelowna's or you withdraw it in Kelowna's, you just have to say, okay, uh, all right, you want you know, just for ease, you want $10,000, tell me what that is in Kelowna so I can pay you in Kelowna. And they'll convert it at that today's rate. Yeah, and tourist areas are used to renting to foreigners. So they list their things in, in, um, in dollars. So it's not that it's, uh, that they're trying to rip you off or anything, that's just who their, their customers usually are. So they, of course, are going to tell you, you know, it's, uh, you know, $600 a month versus giving you the Kelowna rate. But what we usually end up renting is 
um, not in the touristy areas. We rent from individuals, you know, people that maybe uh, they're renting us their grandmother's house, you know, she passed away and so now this house is available, it's empty, um, you know, or they built a house on a piece of property that, that they have for the purpose of making some rental income. So those type of situations, you know, we can bargain, we can deal with them uh, and ask to pay in colonas instead of um, the dollar amount. In fact, the house that we lived in before this one, um, he initially gave Alan a dollar amount and Alan said, no, I want to pay you in colonas. And so he, he gave a colonas amount, which turned out to greatly be in our favor because the uh, Kelowna rate has dropped drastically. So that's a sad thing for the Ticos and for Costa Rica, but for us it was, um, you know, financially it was a, a good thing that we were paying in Kelowna's and not in dollars. So um, you can't necessarily insist in some situations, but it doesn't hurt to ask, you know, to try to find out. So. Uh, I don't know where Alan has gone, but <laughs> let me see if I can find another question. Let's see. I don't see anything new just at the moment, but um, if you're coming here, make sure to have the Waze app. I wish we would have had it when we first got here because um, it is used by everybody and it is an amazing app for getting around because there's so many streets that are one ways and they're not marked or um, you know they're they don't form a block you think you'll just go this way and catch the street and that's not the case so having you know, ways has just saved us so Waze much is the best app to use and the reason now yeah you can use Apple Maps you could use Google Maps but why is Waze the best one? Well, being a high-tech redneck, let me tell you why. See, Waze is user-generated. And so if a user is driving down the road and there's a police, they can type into Waze and let people know there's a police. Mm -hmm. If the road has been washed out because of a, a storm or a tree just fell down, a user can type into Waze. And if you're traveling somewhere and then you're trying to get somewhere, then Waze will redirect you because a user put in there that there's a roadblock, okay? Mm -hmm. So Waze is absolutely the best app to use when trying to get directions yeah. to go somewhere. Yeah, it's made uh, driving around Costa Rica so much better. I wish we would have had it when we first got here. That's right. And I want to take just a moment to say hey, thank you, Craig, and thank you for everyone who is donating and supporting us. You know, you can support us easily by hitting the dollar sign. We greatly, greatly appreciate it. But I also want to thank everyone who joins us as a premium member in the forum. You know, at $10 a month, that's 33 cents a day for us to continue to give you valuable, valuable information. We greatly, greatly, greatly appreciate all of your support. Hey, just putting a like and a thumbs up and comments those are all great ways to support us and, and you know it only takes two seconds to, to like or to put a comment but you don't understand how valuable that is because what that does is that tells the YouTube algorithms that you like this information that it's mm -hmm. valuable so YouTube then begins to push it out so that other people that are interested in Costa Rica want that information so we're not sitting here begging for likes and begging for comments you know it's a reason it's to help you understand how that algorithm will push our information out there to other people. And if you think it's valuable stuff, well then take two seconds to like it, leave a comment so that other people that are interested in Costa Rica can get the same valuable information. So we do greatly, greatly appreciate you. Yeah. And we're probably going to be wrapping it up here shortly, huh? Uh, yeah, but for too long, but I, I do want to answer all of the questions because this is just a live Q&A and uh, we want to be here. We have been here for 78 minutes already, yeah. but hey, I, I, I oh, do. I see questions now. I hadn't seen. Yeah, I, I just got to scroll them. and I want to be sure to answer all of the questions. So if we yeah. haven't answered your question yet, I'm not ignoring it because there are lots of questions. If I haven't answered your question, be sure to put it in there at the bottom so I can see it again and answer that question, okay? Uh, Chris says, is there any way around high taxes to ship a car to Costa Rica? Wow, Chris, that is a good question. 
Uh, no, there is absolutely no way around uh, the high taxes. Now, there is a supposed proposed law, but who knows when or if it will ever be passed. You know, we were all excited about it when we heard, but, you know, they we haven't heard any more about it. Right. So Costa Rica wants to generate and wants to incentivize or encourage uh, expats to come here, but we haven't heard any more on the proposed law. So, Chris, I, I really hate to give you the bad news on that. I don't think there's any way around the high taxes to ship a vehicle to Costa Rica. Yeah. It's just part of coming here. But the good news is it's sometimes better for you to ship your vehicle and pay the high taxes so you know uh, the the condition of your vehicle versus buying one here that you don't know the condition of. Because, you know, our vehicle is 24 years old. It's been in the shop a whole lot. It does ex get expensive to be in the shop, but... Uh, you know, it breaks down all the time. It's old, you know, and if we had a lot of money, well, I would just buy something that was uh, a little newer, but you know what? It, it gets us where we're going, and uh, hey, I, I, you know, I don't have to have a brand new vehicle to, to say, look at me. You know, our vehicle is 24 years old. It's ugly, but it gets me where I'm going, <laughs> and I like my old Galloper, but and like Rebecca said, our Galloper, you know, it's getting harder and harder to find parts for it. So we're going to have to buy something soon. Yeah. You know. Uh, wow. Marcus says we got 29 new Facebook members right now. Awesome. So go, Marcus. Thank hey, you, Marcus. Uh, thank you for your help, Marcus. So Thank you for everybody joining. Yes, I'm excited. So I'm join excited about the Facebook group because we can um, just snap little pictures and, you know, and share stuff that we, you know, that's what Marcus was explaining to us. You know, it, it may not be um, YouTube video worthy, you know, like to make a whole video out of it, but... Uh, it's something that you can quickly share on Facebook, and I wish I would have thought of it yesterday. Our poor little, our poor dog Nikki. She, um, she, we had to take her to the vet yesterday. Uh, she, she having some stomach issues, and uh, I, I didn't think of it though. But we have a great vet here in San Isidro. And um, even and, uh, though we've lived in other other areas, we kind yeah, of yeah. And people want to know where can't where is a good vet. That would have been a perfect opportunity for Rebecca to, to do a little video and share with you where you can get a good vet in San Isidro. So, you know, the Facebook group is going to be phenomenal. Yeah, and they also have grooming there. And um, when I first called for an appointment, the, the receptionist thought I was calling for a grooming appointment. And she was like, oh, we, we're booked up. You know, we don't have any appointments available. And uh, I explained that I was calling for the veterinarian, not for grooming. But every time I'm in there they have uh, pretty pups and kitties so uh, and being that they were booked up I'm pretty sure they do a good job we we don't take our pets to the groomer but um, if you have like a little poodle or oh, yeah you, you know, know something that requires grooming Nikki doesn't require grooming she's short yeah. hair so so that is really neat you know uh, let me see because there's lots of great questions here um, Someone explained, you know, Brian says, well, can you explain the SIMS card issue for the phones there? And uh, that's important. And so the important thing is that if you come in over here with your iPhone, uh, you need to make sure that it's unlocked because some of the phones are locked. So you need to go to your provider, tell them, hey, I'm going to Costa Rica. I need to make sure that my phone is unlocked because when I get there, I'm going to buy a SIMS card. And then you put that SIMS card in your phone, and that way you can call using the local cellular towers, and that way it doesn't cost you a fortune. But that SIMS card will not work unless your phone is unlocked. Okay, so you could save a ton of money. And and look, you can so that, buy that SIMS a... card, a thousand clonas, two thousand, and then you can recharge it for as much as you want, five thousand, ten thousand, and then you can make phone calls on that and have internet access at the same time. Right. So that's a way to have a, a phone internet access without having to sign any kind of contract get into any kind of plan it's just and it's pay as you go that's right that's and right and almost any little grocery store you know you just give them your your phone number and uh, tell them how much you want to put on it and they'll recharge your phone that's right uh, had a couple of people saying that they were having an issue joining the Facebook group. And so just go to the link that I put in the description and I'm going to go ahead and, and, and copy that and put that in there right now. 
So go to the link that's in the description. And Marcus, if you would, put that link in the description a few times uh, just so that people can easily find it as it goes up. But I put a link in there. Click on that link. I, I think you do have to be logged into Facebook. Uh, before you can join that group. So make sure that you're logged into Facebook, click on that link that's in the description, and then there's a place you can hit join group. And it really is that easy, but you do have to, you know, you have to agree to the terms that you're not going to be a troll or a pain in the butt, you know, and you have to, you know, you know, answer a couple of questions. How did you hear about us? Stuff like that. And then you can easily join the group. Now, you know what? You can click join the group. You don't even have to answer those questions. If you're not going to participate, but you just want to see what's going on in there, just clicking on it, then you've joined the group, and uh, but you won't be able to comment. If you want to comment, and if you want to post photos, and you want to share, and you want to ask questions, then you simply do have to answer a few easy questions. Uh, you don't even have to study for that exam. <laughs> it's mostly to verify that. Yeah, it's just to verify who you are, because we don't want trolls in there. That you're not okay. a, a robot. <laughs> yeah, and of course, make sure that you hit like while you're in there, okay? Okay, and John Way says that he's been pending for a while, and hey, there are a lot of people in there, and Marcus is probably going to hit you up real quick, John, to approve you so that you can be live inside the group, okay? Uh, Daniela says, um, what's the best place to live, or where's the best place to live for a family with a teenager and small children? And you know, Daniela, in my opinion, anywhere in the Pear Zeladon area or close to San Isidro is a great place for family because there's just simply not a lot of tourists and it's not real expensive. And they actually do have uh, a... Uh, I'm trying to think of the word, but they have schools. It's an international school for expats uh, in the San Isidro area. Mm -hmm. So, you it's know, English speaking. Yeah, English speaking school. So the San Isidro area is really safe, yeah. wonderful place for you. So Sem I think that answers your question. Sembito is, is uh, good too for family. There's just not that much to do there, but um, it's growing as well. But it's very peaceful, very safe. Um, they have good schools. You know, something to consider if you have teenagers is not every area of, in Costa Rica has um, high schools. They call high school college, right? We, yeah, Caligolo or something like yeah, that. Some, Cali, yeah. And, and uh, so not every town, only, usually only bigger towns have a high school. There's almost every single town has a school, but it's an elementary school. A whole lot like Little House on the Prairie where one teacher teaches all of the subjects. And then once they get into high school, then they'll have to either move, live with family members in that high school to go to high school. So right. it's important to note. But in, in San Isidro, yeah, there's plenty of high schools and have uh, English-speaking high schools. Mm -hmm. And they have a uh, university, um, you know, what we would call college. They have uh, a university in San Isidro. That's right. So, so. <clears throat> those are some important things. Now, Lachey asked a really good question, and Lachey says... You know, are there bigger homes for families available in Costa Rica? In other words, four bedroom houses. Seems like most of the houses online are for smaller families. And you're absolutely right. You know, uh, when you're renting, it's going to be difficult to find bigger houses, right. okay? For the money. For if, the money. If you have a lot of money, if you can pay, um, I don't know what, 1000 2000 we see uh, homes that have... Uh, five, six, seven bedrooms, and that many bathrooms as well. But you're going to spend a lot, a lot of, of money. money and they may not even be for rent. They may only be for sale. So what you want yeah, to keep in or mind... Or they're for rent for um, <coughs> tourism purposes. For tourism, yeah. They're not for long-term rental. Right. So uh, what's typical in Costa Rica is uh, you get typical is two bedroom. You might find some three bedroom. You almost never find two bathrooms in a house, okay? So that's just something that you need to understand. That's part of Costa Rica. Now, obviously, you can find some American built or American style homes, uh, but they much, much harder to find. So it's just important that you need to know that, hey, you can find lots of rentals, but most of them are going to be two or three bedrooms. Not too often you're going to find four bedroom type Right. houses in Costa Rica. I'd say like in comparison in the United States, the medium, you know, what would you call it? Middle class family, almost all middle class family homes have two bathrooms, just standard, right? That's not common yeah. um, here, but they do exist. I mean, we've stayed in some that had uh, yeah. two bathrooms, uh, three bedroom, 
you just pay, you'll pay a little more for it, but yeah. they do exist. Yeah. Now, Atiko Soon says, which bank charges the least for wire transfers? Hey, I wish I knew the answer for that one. You know, every, it seems like every bank does it a little bit different, okay? And now, here's what I have discovered, you know, and I could be wrong. You have the normal banks, uh, kind of like Banco Nacional, you have Bank of Costa Rica, but then you have privately owned banks. It seems like to me the privately owned banks are a lot cheaper than the uh, national banks, okay? So if I were you, you can find some privately owned banks like, uh, what's the name of the uh, very popular uh, privately owned bank? Uh, Copa. Uh, Copa Lianza? Yeah, Copa Lianza is a privately owned bank. They have a lot of fees, though, at Copa Lianza. They do have a lot of fees, but it seems like they're a little bit cheaper in fees than some of the others, okay? Mm -hmm. So anyway, just something for you to check out. It, well, is, it is something to know. It's something that we discovered is if you go <coughs> into the bank and use the teller to do your transfer, it's, what is it, 5%? It's very expensive. So let me give you an example. So we just bought a small, small, small solar system. And uh, if I were to go inside the bank, I want to say that it was... 5% on $1,000, which means it would have cost me $50 for every 1000 that I would have uh, had to... Was it that much? Yeah, I think it was that much. I think so. It was very expensive if I used the teller to withdraw the money. But if I went out to the uh, ATM machine and withdraw the money... It was hardly anything. It was very low fees, you know, three or four bucks, you know. The, where... thing, the thing is, <clears throat> there's limits at the ATM That's right. machine. Uh, you can only withdraw out a certain amount of money at, you know, per time. Of course, you can do more than one, but usually um, Costa Rica doesn't charge you anything at their ATM, but your home bank will often charge a transaction fee, a foreign exchange fee for using the ATM. Yeah, international so you just, just kind of have to weigh it out. For us, it's cheaper. Our, our bank doesn't charge that much. In fact, um, one of your accounts doesn't charge at all charge to anything. use the ATM. Yeah. So that's that's what we do. Yeah. So uh, and you we know, just make multiple the, withdrawals. The, the, you know what I do because for most banks or, or the bank I use, which is Banco Nacional, I can withdraw three hundred and fifty thousand colonas uh, in a single withdrawal up to seven hundred thousand colonas in a single day. Okay, and but. Uh, you know, I've got several different accounts, and so when I needed a lot of money, I would withdraw 700000 700000 700000 and it only cost me, you know, I want to say maybe 20 bucks. where if I'd have gone into the teller, just to withdraw 1000 bucks would have cost me 50 bucks. Yeah, so if you're going to buy a used car, like when we bought our used car and we needed to get out $4,000, um, we had to do some, you know, talking to the bank and... Um, we ended up having to you pay some pretty high fees, huh? Yeah. In so, order to get that money. Now, another quick question here is that uh, Daniela asked, is Uvita a part of San Isidro or Paris, Illinois? And, and no, it's not. It's a, it's a little bit outside. It's a fairly kind of safe place, I would say, but it's, it's touristy. Uvita is touristy because of the whale's tail, okay? So it's, it, it is touristy. Uh, it's on the coast, okay? But, but it's not that developed. It's not that developed, and it's not that... Far. There are some developed areas in there, but it's not as popular as some of the other areas, okay? Mm -hmm. But San Isidro or the Paris Zeladon area, a lot, a lot of places where it's just very safe, and it's close to San Isidro. So just, just to give you an answer on that. Oh, um, Atiko Soon, <laughs> this is a great question. Atiko Soon says, what is the approximate length of time for a letter to arrive to the U.S.? Uh, or, or, or from the U.S. to Costa Rica to a post office box. That is so funny uh, because, you know, we'll have family or friends send us something. And in general, the approximate time is one month, okay? However, Rebecca sent a, uh, a, a small post, a, a letter, and it took, what, four months to, to get months. there, okay? In so, fact, it was, uh, it was a very important letter. But it was sent from Costa Rica to the United right, States, that's what I want to see which with... is different because from the United States to Costa Rica, on average, almost always, it's going to be 30 days, okay? Yeah. There, you know, so anywhere three weeks to sometimes longer if it gets stuck in customs. Could yeah. be a lot longer. You yeah. may never see it if it gets stuck in <laughs> customs. And the mailing of, you know, mailing to the U.S., um, average time is, is also 30 days. Um, 
but that's not guaranteed as would happen with my letter. That's so, right. Now I could have sent it via DHL. DHL was, or FedEx, was, yeah, but then it would have cost you $50 to send that one little yeah, thing. Actually, I think DHL was $60 to send that one um, letter in, in the envelope. And um, so I opted not to spend the $60 and say, well, I'll just send it. I mean, it was important, but it wasn't that important. It could have gotten there in two months and it would have been fine, but it ended up taking months. That's right. So. That's right. So, so, you know, you, you have to understand, hey, you know, the postal service system is very slow. And, you know, mailing a letter is not going to cost that much, but, you know, I often get packages sent. And, you know, if you send a package, it's going to be costly. Uh, but there are tricks and tips on how to send a package. You know, if you send a package to Costa Rica, you know, hey, wrap it up in some birthday gifts and, and, and present wrapping. And sometimes it will bypass uh, customs altogether because they think it's just a little gift for a birthday present or, or Christmas or something like that. Yeah, but they're about to crack down on that. Especially when they watch this video. Anyway, <laughs> and, and never, 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 never did I say never send a package to a family member in an Amazon box or never send a package in an Avon box. Send it in a plain, plain box because if you send it in a commercial box, every time, 100% of the time, it will get stuck in customs because they're gonna want you to pay fees on that. Yeah, and they're, they're, they have rules about, um, you can't send things like um, lotion, you know, body lotion, cosmetics. And so if it's in, my sister sent us something, it was not makeup or anything, but she used to sell Avon, so she had an Avon box and it got stopped in customs and it, it wasn't Avon at all. It was, I forgot what it was, but I don't know. It was, it was uh, just a bunch of letters and bills and things. And so I ended up spending two hours to drive over to the customs office to go pick it up. And, and, and I don't know, five or six bucks in storage fees, yeah. you know, to get a bunch of bills, you know. Yeah. So don't send it in a commercial box. Okay. And you mentioned um, packages from family. Well, I, I read recently that the customs is going to start um, or stop giving the... Um, what would you say like they just let things go like if it's a birthday present you know from family members they're about to start checking all packages whether it's coming from a family member i guess people are abusing the system maybe having um family send them things that should you know they feel like they should be paying the uh, the import tax on so you know, of course, things get mentioned and don't get put into law for a long time. That's right. Now, so, and a lot of times Costa Rica will say some things and they will implement a law only to find out it hurts them more than it benefits them. And then they'll rescind that. Yeah. So it's important to know that things change all the time. So I could tell you today um, that, uh, you know, Costa Rica is doing something and tomorrow. I look like a liar. OK, that's yeah, why I've never changes. been wrong. <laughs> Things change all the time, and there's a lot of hearsay. There's a lot of misinformation, so yeah. it's really hard to get the yeah. facts. Like I mentioned about going to the border, make sure that you get the facts. It can be difficult. We had a hard time. Remember when we were first trying to go to the border? Uh, we had a hard time finding out the facts because even when we would <coughs> talk to officials, we would get um, different, different uh, information from even officials. Yeah, you, you know, know, it's important to, to, you know, that's why we have the, uh, the forum, because in the forum we try to give you all of the facts and we update things as we get it. You know, it's going to be great to have the Facebook group, because in the Facebook group, people can share their experiences, mm -hmm. okay? You yeah. know, for example, you know, George said, hey, I spent $67 to get an 8 by 11 envelope from Houston by FedEx. However, it did arrive at my house in three days. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you can spend some money and it will arrive quickly. However, right. if you rely on USPS, it's going to take some time. You know, another great question is that, um, you know, uh, CA says you mentioned visa runs, or, you, know, a, you know, a border run. H how long does that go on for? Well, until you are a resident and, and you know, we've been here for since 2013 and we've been doing a, our, our border runs every 90 days for over seven years. That does get old, but that's just a part of living in Costa Rica. When you get a residency and you're a, a bona fide resident, you don't have to do a visa run or a border run. Okay. And so it's important to understand that 
until you become a bona fide resident. And even when you start the residency process, you can start the process. You don't have to go to the border run, but in order to legally drive, you still have to do the border run every 90 days while your residency is in process. It's important to know those things. That's why we've created the forum and the Facebook group in order to help you to understand the facts, okay? Yeah. Because everything does change, you yeah. know? And I know that it, that can be very frustrating because I belong to some Facebook groups and, and I read, you know, what's going on. And I, I read recently that um, somebody who just did a border run, that they had to provide a COVID test to come back into you know, COVID test results to come back into Costa Rica. Well, then I saw a news article from the Tico Times this morning that said Costa Rica is still not requiring a COVID test, um, you know, negative result to come into the country. So which one, you know, which one is true? This person who experienced it, but like we have seen, when you go in person, somebody can just tell you, oh, you need this. And they don't know what they're talking about. You know, they, they can be an official and they tell oh, you have to have this and you just, you have to comply. But that may not even be the law. It may not even be the rule. Just like with um, the thing about people say you have to be stamped out for at least 72 hours. Well, when we first got here, that was, everybody told us that, that was the rule. Well, we kept, research and talking to people and talk to uh, a lawyer that said no that's not the rule that that's has right. become the rule because the misinformation has been repeated so much that everybody thinks that that is the case that's right that's but, why it's very important to join our forum you join our forum yeah it's free there's a lot of free stuff in there hey yeah you can join as a premium member for 10 bucks and help support us we greatly appreciate it but there's lots of free stuff in there so you know like rebecca said you know we were told oh you stamp out you do the border run you got to be gone for 72 hours there's no truth to that. There's a lot of misinformation out there. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of expat groups out there, expat Facebook groups. They are rude, crude, and mean. They will say all kind of ugly stuff to you because you asked a simple question. If you don't know, you don't know. Don't be rude in my Facebook group. I will throw you out. So it's very plain and simple. Join our group, have a lot of fun, be kind. Because if you are gonna be rude and mean publicly to somebody, you can apologize publicly or we can throw your troll out, okay? So we just wanna have fun. It's just real simple. Have fun, help one another, be nice, treat people the way you wanna be treated. And if you wanna be treated mean, well, you're out of here. Cause you know, we just love people. We wanna be friendly, we wanna help people. Yeah, and if you're gonna share your experience, um, say that, that it's your experience, you know, kinda um, let people know that it's not the for sure law, you know? <laughs> So that uh, there's, it limits some of the, the confusion. So. Yeah. You know, it, it, you know, it's really important. We always like to say, hey, I don't know everything. And Rebecca's bad about making it up if she don't know it. No, <laughs> I'm lying. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. You know, uh, we, will, we will tell you from our experience, this is what we've done, okay, and what we, what we did. Uh, so we try to give factual information. We try to be very kind to everybody. And, and there, there's been some people that's been rude, crude, and mean. And as much as I want to just pound somebody, I, it's too easy to hit the delete button, okay? So, you know, we try to be really nice. And there is a lot of misinformation. So we're trying to help people as much as we possibly can, yeah. okay? And sometimes we unknowingly, innocently, um, have the wrong information. Yeah, and, you and know. you know, it's kind of like, now George says, you know, I heard that Nicaragua requires the COVID test to cross the border. And you know what? I think that's the same is true for Panama. Although Costa Rica is not requiring you to have a COVID test to come back in, I think you have to have, a, it's like going to the United States. If we go to the United States right now, we have to have a COVID test in order to enter the United States. That's why uh, a lot of people were um, doing their border runs to Mexico because that's right. Mexico was not requiring 
the COVID test. And but you know what? They're making it very easy to get your COVID test. Oh, it's, it's a lot easier. Right now, uh, in the airports, you can actually get the COVID test while you're in the airport. Yeah. You have to arrive, I think, four hours early, but they're saying they'll guarantee you a response in one hour. So it is getting a yeah. lot, lot easier. And the price is going down. When they first right. we were first looking at COVID tests um, in order to to leave the country, to go back to the United States, it was like a hundred and- Oh, wow, it was I expensive, know, 150, 150 bucks, $160, you know. dollars, but the prices have come down. I think the cheapest I've seen was $50 or $40, $49, and the average price seems to be around 60. Yeah, you, you can get a lot cheaper. Yeah. Uh, another good question, Evelyn says, well, how much money a year will you need to live on? And uh, you know, that's a great question that has multiple answers. So yeah. let me put it this way. Rebecca and I, we don't own our place and we rent. Keep in mind, we rent typical Tico houses and we can easily find places to rent for $200 or $300 a month, okay? And we can easily live on $1,000 to $1,500 a month. So you multiply $1,000 to $1,500 by 12, that gives you your answer. Now, if you come down here, and I've, I've told a lot of my friends, if you come down to Costa Rica with $200,000, you can easily buy a place, a nice place to live for $200,000. And if you buy a place for $200,000, well, you now no longer have a mortgage and you can easily, easily, easily live on $1,000 a month. Mm -hmm. Meaning $12,000 a year, you can live high on the hog, in my opinion, on $2,000 a month, Man, you're living like a king in Costa Rica if you own your own place and you don't have a mortgage or rent. And we say that because, um, well, first of all, let me say, and if you do spend 200000 on a property, then you qualify um, to, get to, your to get your residency. You still have to apply and everything. You still have to pass the, uh, the FBI check and, and, yeah. and all of that stuff. But, um, yeah, like Alan was saying, okay, one thing... Um, to think about is the required the pensionata is that how you say it? yeah the pensionata for retired for people. retired people the minimum is a thousand dollars you have to show that you have a pension of, that comes from the government or you know you can prove yeah. that you got a thousand dollars a month pension right so they they put that as their minimum so uh, obviously they feel like people can live can, on a, can survive on a thousand dollars a month right so, but of course, you know, we're not talking about car repairs and owning a vehicle and going out to eat, you know, several times a week and so forth. Although you can eat at sodas for very cheap very and cheap. sodas are nice places to eat. Yeah. However, so it just, it depends on the quality. Depends on, um, depends you on your comfort style, right? Your yeah. comfort level. And and the house we're staying in right now, a lot of people would turn their nose up at it and it would be like, ah, oh, I would not stay there. But it's all in what you what you value. That's you know? right. You know, for us, we got a roof over our head. We got a comfortable bed. You know, that's all it's that's safe, important. We it's love clean. being outside. Yeah. You know, most. It's not luxurious. Yeah. Priority <laughs> for us is we both work online. So priority is that we have decent internet to work online. Yeah. And we've done it with with six megas down and three up. Hey, we've actually done it with one up. It's difficult, but we can. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's all in what you're used to, okay? Yeah. In fact, this place that we're renting is 200,000 colonas a month. <laughs> and that comes out to like, um, with, with the current uh, exchange rate, that comes out to like 365, something like that. For two, what? The 200,000 colonas a yeah. month. Yeah, you know, the it's two... Like, 300. Yeah, 200,000 colonas a month. It's under $400. Yeah, it, it's fairly okay, cheap. It's between 350 and $400 yeah. because of the, the exchange rate. But um, it includes, okay, the place to stay, it's furnished. Although the furniture is not, you know, top notch, it's still, it's clean and it's nice. Um, the electricity is included. The propane tank is included. The internet the is included. The internet is included. Everything the water is included. Is included. The, trash the trash is included. The trash pickup is included. It's gated. It's got a parking area. It's in the middle of the city, <laughs> close to everything. So when you look at it, really, 200,000 colonas a month, that's a dang good deal. Yeah, but like I said, it's not luxurious, you know, but... I'm um, not, you know, <laughs> I'm not living in a palace, but I ain't hurting for nothing. Yeah, and we've done really good at... Um, 
every every city that every little town even uh, up in the mountains we've found really good deals but we were living here so we had the time to look around and talk to people and so forth and uh, we we had a great benefit in that we did the house sitting yeah so here's a note okay here's a note if you're taking notes this is an extremely important tip you can look forever at home and, and outside of Costa Rica and it's hard to find anything but when you come to Costa Rica come to Costa Rica do a, a discovery tour, a recon tour, you will be amazed at what you can find and the prices that you can find it for when you got boots on the ground. When you're here, you will be amazed at what you can find, where you can live, and at some phenomenal, some very great prices, okay? So yes, when you're buying stuff, groceries, uh, electricity, those things are expensive, but the cost of living is very cheap when you can live for $200, $300 a month in your rental. So mm -hmm. yes, yeah. you know, you can find stuff at a great price when you're in Costa Rica. Yeah, and as far as cost of living, you know, it's nothing to spend $100 every grocery, sh grocery shopping trip. Yeah. You know, but um, we, we buy some things that most people wouldn't buy or don't, um, not that they wouldn't buy, that they don't need to buy, however, we, um, are very thrifty in that we don't buy a lot of processed foods. Yeah, yeah. We, we don't buy cereals and uh, cold drinks and you know and stuff like that. But then, you know, yeah. he'll get apple juice and that's you know. right. You know. <laughs> so, you know, things that other people maybe yeah. don't buy. And we have pets. We spend a lot of money we on our pets. We spend a, uh, a lot of money yeah. on, our, on our pets, so okay? That's we not spoil really, them, yeah, right? That's not really in our thousand yeah. dollar budget, that's you know, right. vet cost or right. even. Um, now, Evelyn has a good question. Uh, she says it's a silly question, but really it's not a silly question. It's something you need to know about. And, and you know, and that's why, because, you know, Evelyn, if you were to ask this question on some of these other expat groups, they would tear you up, okay? <laughs> uh, but th this is an important question you're asking. You know, I say no question is a dumb question. No question is a silly question. Evelyn says, it's a silly question, but are there many bugs around? Absolutely, Evelyn. And, and you need to understand that you're coming to a tropical country and in most houses, not in this one, but in most houses, uh, it's, it's, there's, it's not sealed. There's a lot of holes and a lot of places for bugs to come in. In this house, it's pretty sealed, but almost 95% of the houses in Costa Rica does not have any screens on it, which means if you open up the window so you can get some airflow, bugs are gonna come in. So yes, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of bugs and you get used to having bugs. I mean, the other day, there was a bug about as big as my head. No, <laughs> well, that, but that was a big old spider, you know, and um, Rebecca saw one today, you yeah, know, that she... It wasn't as big as the one the other day, but it still startled me. It was big enough for me to spot across That's the right. floor. Yeah, so, you know, you do get a lot of bugs here. But, you know, I've there's a lot of bugs, but not a lot of dangerous bugs that I have found. Yeah, well, there are, there are poisonous spiders and so forth, but um, even, like, this house is in the city, and we still see... Um, little beetles and the spiders and so forth. But a lot of the houses um, that we've stayed in for uh, house sitting were owned by uh, people who had money and they paid for pest control. So you can, you know, they're called fuma, fumigadors. Fumigators, <laughs> fumigators is what it translates fumidors, to. So. I suppose. Um, so they, they are here, there is a service and um, you know, it's, yeah. it's an extra though. Uh, a lot of the houses that we rent, they don't have that service, yeah. so. Now, I can see that we've gone on for 111 minutes, which means we're close to two hours and I wanna shut it down so that other people will get an opportunity to watch it because people just simply, they see it's two hours long and they won't watch it. But hey, we're having a good time today. It's a Q&A and it's really for you. We wanna answer any questions about moving to Costa Rica, living Costa Rica, the Tinamaste area, but at the same time, one last announcement. Please go join our Facebook group. It's brand new. It's new. It's a place where people are friendly, kind, courteous. Doug says, my wife says I probably shouldn't join because I could be mean sometimes. <laughs> hey. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with having an opinion. 
you just don't have to degrade people or, That's or right. criticize people, put people down. There's there's a um, civil, a very nice way to share your opinion. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can be factual. There's nothing wrong with being factual. And there's a lot of times that I myself, I can get kind of mean. I can get upset when I say, I got the gringo price again. Arr, you know, so there's nothing wrong with being factual and being real about getting cheated or, or something wrong happening. But you don't but, have to belittle people. Yeah, you don't have to. To be mean to people and you don't have to be rude to people and you don't have to be ugly to people okay that's what I mean by not being a, a troll or being mean you know we love people I do and I love to talk to people I love to meet people so hey join the forum have fun you're not gonna get belittled belittled okay and we're gonna try to help you out so uh, I do want to shut it down before it gets too terribly long but I do want to answer your question. So if I haven't answered your question and you've got a pressing question, hey, I'm not scared to answer any kind of question. You, uh, you may not know the answer, but... <laughs> I might not know the answer. We'll say that. I might not agree with your thinking, but it doesn't matter whether I agree with your thinking or not. I'm going to answer it to the best of my ability and I'm going to give you a non-biased answer because it's not about my belief. You know, in other words, here's a good example. You know, a lot of people know that me and God are close friends. Maybe you don't believe in God, and that's okay. If you don't believe, that's all right. I'm not upset with you that you don't believe, but don't get mad at me that I do believe. Hey, I believe that everybody uh, should be able to believe whatever they want to believe, and I'm not going to push my beliefs on you, and if you don't push your beliefs on me, we can be best friends, and that's the way I think it ought to be everywhere. You know, so especially hey, in something like a, a Facebook group where, you know, it might be right. a little different within your own family. Yeah. Or something. <laughs> yeah. So and, and John Way says, well, how much land were you able to pick up in the mountains? And and John, you know, that's a good question. I can't wait to share with you where Rebecca and I are moving in the mountains. And um, we haven't the, actually bought it. <laughs> we haven't actually bought a piece of property in the mountains. There's a guy that owns a property we've been good friends with for years and years and years. He's uh, a lot older. He doesn't have any family. He's asked us, to, because we're such close friends, he's asked us to come move on the property. And so we're building a tiny house there that we're going to be sharing with you guys. He's letting us lease. You um, know, and yeah, he's, you know, so we signed a lease so that, you know, the money that we're investing, we've signed a lease on a piece of property, okay? But in the mountains, you can buy a large track of land for very, very, very cheap, okay? Because, you know, a lot of the land is unusable. But, you know, so just to kind of give you an idea, to kind of answer your question without answering it and dollar-wise, you can buy properties that are way in the mountains, very remote, very, very, very cheap. Mm -hmm. So I hope that answers your question, okay? Yeah. Of course, you need to research and get a good lawyer because there's um, Indian, you know, indigenous people's lands yeah. that... Uh, sometimes uh, Ticos will try to sell to you and they don't actually own the land. So you got to be careful of stuff like that. Yeah. So, um, and, and yes, you know, Costa Rica is a dog friendly place. You are going to get adopted by a lot of dogs. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you uh, have a soft heart for dogs, it's kind of hard sometimes yeah. because there are a lot of um, dogs that are just used as a alarm systems and doorbells. Yeah. They yeah. kind of chained up, but Yeah. Gina says, "Have you uh rented or know of someone who has lived in the Tierra Pacifica?" And you know, I'm not familiar with that area at all. Mm -hmm. So surprisingly, we've been to a lot of places, but I've not heard of Tierra Pacifica. Uh haven't heard of that place. Um We've lived in a lot of places and have absolutely loved it, but we have intentionally not lived in uh, very popular places on the outskirts of San Jose or the metropolitan area. Meta How do you say that word again? <laughs> now you got me where I can't say it. <laughs> anyway, the big areas outside <laughs> of San Jose. Metropolitan. Metropolitan areas uh, <laughs> in San Jose we've not lived in. A lot of people live there, and, they're in, and obviously they're a little higher than normal because a lot of gringos and tourists and expats live and there. some okay? very pretty houses. Oh, pretty a lot of beautiful places out there, okay? Mm -hmm. So anyway, I'm really, really excited to kind of share with you guys our journey because we're going to be building an off-grid homestead. So hey, give me some likes up. Give me some thumbs up. Uh, put, oh yeah, if you're excited about 
finding out and kind of following along with us as we share how we're going to build an off-grid homestead in Costa Rica. I'm really excited about that, you know, uh, showing everyone, hey, we don't know it all, so we're going to be learning along the way, and we want you to give us a hand. We want you to help us as we share, you know, gardening, learning how to be self-sufficient, building an off-grid homestead, because we're going to a place that has no electricity, no cell phone signal, no internet, but it's got lots of water, but we're going to build an off-grid homestead in Costa Rica, and we're going to have fun doing it. All the while, we're going to do it while we have no money. How's that work? <laughs> uh, donate? <laughs> anyway, we're going to have a lot of fun. And if you're excited about that, hey, put an oh yeah in the comments, because we're excited to share our journey with you while we continue to share facts and information about Costa Rica. Share the cultural difference about Costa Rica. So make sure that you join our Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash living in CR and uh, join the group, join our forum, join our email list. All of the links are in the description below. Guys, we greatly appreciate you. It's been two hours now and I've had a blast. How about you? No, I've enjoyed it. I've had a great time. And hey, thanks everyone that has donated to the Apple Juice Fund. I think it's time to uh, put a little bit more apple juice in there. And thanks so much for everyone. We greatly appreciate you. Uh, any last minute questions, definitely, definitely uh, want to help you out. But we greatly, greatly you. Yeah. Uh, well, we're, we're excited. Gonna, we're going to do more lives. Oh, know, we're going to do more lives. And, you know, our biggest challenge is getting the internet to where we're going. Yeah. And I'm really, really excited to share with you that process. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's not that we, we don't have any money at the time. We have money saved. It's just we don't have funds to completely build. To what, do, you know, yeah, we're yeah. going to have to do it in stages as we have the funds. So that should be fun <laughs> yeah. to, uh, to live in a partially uh, build as you go, make That's it as right. you go. That's you right. Know, so when we say we have no money, uh, you know, we, we've been saving up and saving up for our piece of property, but you know, we make money because we work online, so we make money to live every day, but we're going to be building it as it comes, okay? And uh, So it yeah, might be a slow process. <laughs> might be a slow process, but we're going to have fun doing it, and we're going to teach you a lot of fun, cool stuff. Uh, it's it's going to be fun. I'm excited. I can't wait to get started on that process. All right, everybody. We're going to let you go. Uh, I've had a great time today. I hope you've had a good time. Join our Facebook group. We're going to see you next week. I don't know if we're going to be doing a live next week or not, but I'm sure we're going to have some sort of video next week. If you had a good time, make sure you like the video, and we're going to see you next week. Thank you so much, everybody. See you.